All right, we're back in game two. We had to wait four to five hours in the tournament hall before the second game because the first game commences at 10. I don't know why I said a fancy word. The first game starts at 10 a.m. And then it ends whenever it ends. It could take two hours. It, it could take four because it's 90 plus 30 increment. So this and every game or every second game starts at four. You have to wait for everyone in the whole synagogue to finish the games that they're playing the top and bottom floor and all the pairings come out and then you can play the second game at 4 p.m. so now it's 4 p.m. we've waited we've made some friends we've made some enemies and my opponent plays e4 and then after my opponent plays e4 I obviously go into my carol so I go into my caracon and he plays advanced and to be honest with you guys, I'm already smiling. And the reason I'm already smiling is because I love the advanced. I love the two pawns and they usually advance and in his case they, he advanced. And I love creating this isolated pawn after he pushes and playing for it. I've played it so many times, blitz, rapid, everything. And it's actually one of the most successful percentages of wins in my whole like repertoire and games. On chess.com so he I push and he plays this and I get my knight out I don't need to take straight away and now he plays h3 which you know what surprisingly even though I just said I played this so many times I've never seen that move and that move is nice because that move stops my bishop which I would be more than happy to trade because I'm putting all my pawns on light squares but anyways since he played that I played here and then he played knight f3 I just close up the center, ready to take, but making sure that nothing is possible. And now he develops a piece ready to castle, and I take. And then he takes, and then I go takes, because I don't care about the bishop, and I want my knight to land in this square. But I've come to realize that's not a good move. The better move is to just go bishop here. Let the knight come here. Maybe queen comes here or then maybe getting ready to castle but anyways i just went with my plan and i went queen here and you might you guys might be thinking okay why did you go queen here there's several ways to play that's not one of them sorry but one of them's here and the reason i did because this is an isolated pawn yes but it is on a dark square which means with a dark squared bishop even if he's going to be so annoying and block his dark squared bishop and give it purpose for it to be only a pawn protector he could so i decided to go queen here force him to trade the dark squared bishop and we did exactly that and now i took him into an end game where i thought i can win this pawn because his light squared bishop won't help but his king is slightly more active so sorry i had to take a breath there so here his bishop comes in to stop my knight from coming in and he's playing solid you know what the props to my opponent he's playing really solid and he ended up actually getting a better score than me in the tournament so not only is he playing solid he's more solid than me so i play here in case i want to move my rook in case i want to just move my king get my rooks in i don't want to have to worry about this pawn which is funny because that's the same thing we did in the first game and then here i he played g4 interesting idea he saw me ca uh, not castled if I get ready to castle, maybe there's a storm, maybe not. And now I had two ideas. Both my ideas were, listen, this is weak. If I can castle, open up, these are weak. If not, then I might just try to slow play it, uh, open up on the king's side, get my rooks in, and try to get this pawn. And one of them worked. So I went here to stop the bishop from having any play whatsoever. And then he goes here which is a very interesting idea ready to push but not really because if i take this as a target so he's not it's not ready just yet and i castle and i castle because i'm ready to play f6 so he goes king here knowing that his knight might need to move after f6 so my opponent is very solid actually sorry that's the wrong move he plays king e3 which is even more solid which is even 10 times more solid because not only does he protect this and this he protects this guy 
The only thing about this move that might not be as solid is it could be prone to a check, but that doesn't matter because it's protected by 1 and 2, and it's going to be hard for me to remove both defenders. So here I go f6, and he goes here, ready to blow up the board and have an attack on my king. But unfortunately for him, black is minus 1 if I keep playing accurate moves. So here, I try to double up the rook, and I lost the advantage already. So I lost the advantage already. I was talking about playing accurately and I played f6 to open up the board but I don't know why I delayed it so much. So he goes here and now I had a chance to double up so I went for it. I went for it. Again, anytime he plays this, he could maybe lock me out from taking. Or he could just in time come to defend. But he doesn't. Instead he goes here. He thinks that maybe he has an attack if he opens up the board with the two rooks and the bishop and the knight coming in but he doesn't the knight protects the pawn the rook protects the pawn and the king i'm well defended so now i open up and now he takes with the knight i take with the knight and now i just give a check he has to go back if he goes this way it's going to be mate or this way it's going to almost be mate so he goes back i take so you see this I had to give him a check first. Why take? Win some tempos. Get a check. Go back. Get another check. Go back. And now move to the side. Why did I not move to the side? So move to the side to win a pawn. Because I was scared that his pawns might roll over me. And just come. What? Guys, ignore what I just said. I just said roll over me and just come. But you know what I mean. So here I give him a chance to play. I, he now pushed a pawn and his rook can come and take this pawn. But then I looked at the whole scenario because it's classical and I calculated like 30 moves, okay, like 4 moves ahead. And I didn't see anything for him, even if he came and successfully took the pawn. So I went here, proceeded with the plan, and now he missed this. So he went for this, but he missed the fact that his rook was hanging and his king was cut off from the f file so i took the rook he took a bunch of trades happen and i'm just completely winning and now i gave him another check here he moved back after i took this he resigned he resigned because i'm just a clean rook up and even if he gets the spawn like it's over he can get the spawn but i mean i even have mate threats and like let's say the rook goes back I just go here, I can maybe go for mate, and the fact that he went all the way here to take is almost hard to stop mate. So yeah, uh, second game, I was pretty happy, we won with black, and uh, very successful first day. So I was very pumped, it was the first day, and let's just say that was one of the best days of the three day tournament. I'm not gonna give too many, sorry, too many spoilers, but thank you for watching. And let's hop to game three. For you, it might be two seconds. For me, it's probably like half an hour. I'll see you soon. Thank you.